Today, this 12 years old boy was brought to me with complaints of decreased vision in the left eye. Now, when I checked his vision, it was 66 in the right eye and 660 in the left eye. I thought of amblyopia, cornea was clear, pupil was reactive, there was slight exodeviation of the left eye as well. Now, I dilated the child and found two oval shaped punched out chorioretinal scars around three to four disc diameters in size on the left eye macula and that was the reason of decreased vision in the left eye and strabismus now on the right eye fundoscopy i found one three to four disc diameter chorioretinal punched out scar above the superior arcade now macula was safe it was healthy and that was the reason of a 6 6 vision so i diagnosed this child with congenital toxoplasmosis old quite scars incidentally found on fundoscopy so what is toxoplasmosis it is caused it is an infection caused by toxoplasma gondii and obligate intracellular protozoan. One of the critical mode of human infection is transplacental hematogenous spread to the fetus. In pregnant women, the mother is often symptom free or has mild constitutional symptoms. Severity of fetal involvement depends upon the time of maternal infection. In very early pregnancy, abortion can occur due to congenital toxoplasmosis. Later in pregnancy, if mother gets infected, in 70% you can have retinochoroiditis scars in the retina, like, the, like in our patient, which can be found later and as incidental findings or if on macula with decreased vision now if the child immunity decreases later in life reactivation occurs along the old scars and severe vitritis which is called head light in the fog vitritis whitish raised lesion along the margins of the old scars, fluffy white retinitis with pigmentary scars, satellite lesions, vasculitis, all these can be found in the active as well as pillow anterioritis. Now the question comes when to treat toxoplasmosis? And before going towards the treatment, the, it is one of the most common cause of posterior uveitis and the causes of decreased vision due to toxoplasmosis are macular scars, macular edema, optic nerve involvement, vascular occlusion, retinal detachment and choroidal neovascularizations in these punched out scars. So when to treat toxoplasmosis because not every case you should treat like our patient had no active lesions so observation is the rule but follow-up is necessary because if the immunity declines there are chances of in active infections so if you get active lesions in the periphery you don't treat you only treat the patients uh, with the side threatening lesions involving the macula papillo macular bundle optic nerve head along vascular arcades severe vitritis uh, and in immunocompromised patients treatment is given for four to six weeks and lesions resolve in four to six months treatment of congenital toxoplasmosis in new nates with antimicrobials for one year reduce the frequency of subsequent development of retinochoroidal scars in the future 
Now treatment is prednisolone 1 mg per kilogram along with pyrimethamine folic acid antagonist loading dose is 75 to 100 mg for 2 days followed by 25 to 50 mg daily for 4 weeks along with oral folinic acid and sulfadiazine 1 gram 4 times a day for 3 to 4 weeks but should be avoided in sulfa allergic patients alternative is azithromycin 500 mg daily in combination with prednisolone pyrimethamine and folinic acid it's a new regime now the third regime is septron trimethoprine co taxazole plus steroids in pregnant patients pyramycin is given other effective drugs are clindamycin and atovacone so that was the treatment but the treatment is given in active lesions active toxoplasmosis it is one of the common posterior uveitis cases one of the exam favorite question and these macular scars are these quite macular scars are incidental findings on fundoscopy thank you